everyone. Myself, I'm Tahira Mozumdar and I'm from IT department uh, in Ajay Kumar Gurk Engineering College. And today I'll be talking on the topic of bandwidth utilization through multiplex multiplexing, which comes under the subject computer networks with a subject code KCS uh, 603. Uh, to start with, uh, first I'll be talking about uh, the index, what I'll be, uh, the topics which I'll cover today. First, I'll give a brief introduction to the concept of bandwidth and multiplexing. Then this, I'll follow this by giving a format, the basic format that, it, that is involved in the building of a multiplexed system. Then I'll talk about the types of multiplexing that is involved in uh, bandwidth utilization. One is analog and the other one is digital. Under this, it has got subcategories again and we'll be taking them up one by one. And then to, uh, I'll be, as I'm taking up the, as I'm covering these topics, I'll also take up some numericals which comes under these topics. Uh, to start with, uh, first I'll give a brief introduction to what exactly bandwidth is and what is multiplexing. So bandwidth basically, if you talk about what exactly bandwidth is, uh, we can say bandwidth is basically an amount of data that is being transmitted from the sender to the receiver, from sender that is one from one end of the computer system to the other end of the computer system. And bandwidth, why, why is bandwidth significant? Because with respect to bandwidth, when we're talking about bandwidth, we come to the concept of speed. How many data or how many bits can be transmitted between two devices connected over the network per unit time? We normally uh, go for the unit of calculation of bandwidth by B, uh, bits per second, which we also call it as BPS. Now, next is why is it important? Why is bandwidth important? Because when we are talking about bandwidth, our, our focus of discussion moves towards the concept of ensuring fast data transfer between communicating devices connected over a network. And, the, and obviously, the, the more the bandwidth we have, the more desirable is the network, the faster the system becomes. Why bandwidth is basically the amount of data that is being transmitted. So between, between two communicating devices connected over the network, it is always desirable to, to have a higher bandwidth so that we can transfer more amount of data per, per unit amount of time. Now, if you look at this concept, if you look at this concept, uh, we have this, uh, let us give a brief introduction to bandwidth and multiplexing before, uh, like I'll just talk about uh, how exactly picturally the difference between smaller bandwidth and larger bandwidth. If you look at this, this is a figure where, for example, we want to transmit text, images, and video, and the same thing we want to transmit here. Now, this figure, if you look at it, this is a conical structure where, from the figure, we can identify that less amount of data will be transmitted per amount of per unit time. But in this case, it will be more data that will be transmitted per unit time because of the very structure, the very look that we can see from the figure. This is just a figurative description. We will go into more technical detail as we take up in the next slides. <coughs> So, if you take some more example, let us say when we all know uh, that we are, we all access internet through ISP, we are provided internet service through ISP, which is called as internet service provider. Basically, they are meant for helping uh, and customers to connect to the internet, right? And ISP is a device where we as users connect to the ISP through our modems and it is desirable that ISP provides large bandwidth so that the speed of communicating or accessing the internet becomes faster. So this is another example where the concept of bandwidth comes into, uh, can be taken as an example. So normally when you're talking about bandwidth for ISP or internet service providers, we can take up the unit as, let us say Mbps or Mbps means megabits, which can be shown in the form of millions of bits per second or uh, BP uh, or billions of bits per second, which you also call it as gigabits. Now, this uh, we all know like what is Mbps? Mbps is 10 to the power 6 bits per second, fine. And we, we call it as Mbps or mega, millions of bits. Gigabits, we can say it is 10 to the power 9, 10 to the power 9 bits per second. We also have Kbps where uh, if you talk about Kbps, this is another unit of bandwidth. Here it is 10 to the power 3 bits per second. These are the units of bandwidth. But when it comes to uh, internet connectivity, normally we use the unit of Mbps or Gbps. Right? And this is an example where the concept of bandwidth is very much frequently talked upon whenever we discuss about the speed when you are accessing the internet. 
So normally we can say the higher the bandwidth, the quicker is the device, the quicker we can download the data and with the quicker we can send emails and we can see streamed movies and videos. So, and uh, basically if, if you look, if you want to define what exactly bandwidth utilization is, we can say bandwidth utilization, it basically focuses on the wide using or sorry on the wise wise utility or wisely using of the available bandwidth that is there in the existing system how to use the bandwidth in a wise manner so that we can increase our speed of data communication and this is what bandwidth utilization is all about now before uh, we have various techniques of bandwidth utilization how exactly do we uh, utilize our bandwidth in an optimum way so that the internet speed becomes fast. There are some techniques which we will be taking up which broadly are categorized into two types. We call them as analog and uh, digital uh, bandwidth method, digital multiplexing system sorry. And before that, before we go for these different methods, we will just take up the concept of multiplexing and then we will move on to the methods that are used for multiplexing which helps in bandwidth utilization and bandwidth optimization we can say. What is multiplexing? Multiplexing is a concept which we all are familiar with, most of the people who are dealing with computer science and IT related subjects. Multiplexing basically it is a set of techniques which allows a simultaneous transmission of multiple signals across a single data link. That means uh, if you look at this figure, we have multiple input lines. If you look at it, we have n number of input lines that are coming from n different devices. Let us say this is device 1, this is device 2 and so on from diff n different devices and input lines are coming and we have a multiplexer which is an electronic circuit. The role of this multiplexer is to ensure out of this n input lines, one of the lines it will basically, uh, it will it will go for, uh, out, it select out of this n input lines it will select one of the input lines and it will transmit it between the sender and the receiver. So, uh, when what when do we go for multiplexing? We normally go for multiplexing in the concept of uh, bandwidth utilization. We normally go for multiplexing when the bandwidth of the medium. In this example, if you look at it, if you look at it, this is the medium, the medium that is used for communicating between the connecting devices. If the bandwidth of the medium, it is if it is greater than the bandwidth that is needed for the devices, in that case, we need to we need to ensure that uh, this greater, since the bandwidth is more, let us say the, the bandwidth is here, it is in, let us say, let us say it is in Mbps. And the, uh, here the input devices, the data that is coming from N input devices, let us say they are in Kbps. So obviously we can say the bandwidth of the medium is greater than the bandwidth of the data stream that is coming to the system or to the medium. So in that case, what we will do, we will go for multiplexing. So multiplexing is a technique that is used when we have a scenario when the bandwidth of the medium is larger. And it, basically, we will go for uh, multiplexing because through multiplexing, we go for wisely utilizing the channel or the bandwidth of the channel in such a way that the speed of data transmission becomes hurried up or fastened. So, uh, so as we say, from uh, we have these two units, the multiplexer unit, and the uh, at the sender's end, at the sender's end, we have the multiplexer, and at the receiver's end, we have the demultiplexer. Right? At the sender's end, we have n data coming from n different devices. Let us say device one, device two, device n, and it is being multiplexed to one channel. And at the receiver's end, it will be one data coming from the medium, multiplexed uh, or sent to out of to one of the devices to one of the end devices, fine. The basic format here, the lines, if you look at it, the lines on the left directs their transmission to a multiplexer. This, this lines directs the transmission to a multiplexer and this are combined into a single stream, as I said, at the multiplexers end, it is many to one and at the demultiplexers end, it is one to many. So, what does it do at the dim lamp multiplexer? The, it separates the stream which is coming over the medium into its component transmission. And how does it do to, how do, is that being achieved? How do we do that? We'll take up with examples in the subsequent slides. Here, <coughs> here if you look at it, the link, when you're talking about the link, the word link basically 
for this particular instance, we are saying the word link basically refers to the physical path. So, if you look at this path, we have one physical link, one physical connection. So, you have got one link. Link here refers to the physical path that is existing between the communicating devices or the network. And what is channel? Channel, it is referring to the portions of the network that is being shared between the devices or that carries the transmission between a given pair of lines. So, if you are seeing that we have got n input lines and this n input lines will be shared, data will be shared for transmitting this n input lines over this medium. So, basically we have got one link being shared by n channels coming from n different devices. So, we will say n, we, how many channels? We have n channels. So, we can say uh, one link can have multiple channels where link refers to the physical medium and channel refers to the data lines that are coming from the devices which are connected to the multiplexer one at a time. Now, let us come to the next topic. The next topic is what are the types of multiplexer. So, uh, broadly we can categorize multiplexer as being compromised of three important types. Uh, we have this basically we can say multiplexing are broadly categorized into two types. One is the analog multiplexing technique and the other one is the digital multiplexing technique. Now, under analog multiplexing technique, again, we have two types. We call it as frequency division multiplexing technique and the other one is wavelength division multiplexing technique. Both this technique comes under the category of analog multiplexing techniques. And under digital multiplexing technique, we have time division multiplexing technique. Analog, in case of, I uh, will be talking right now, I am not talking more on this. I will talk more on this as we take up one by one. Uh, just to uh, just as for summarizing, we can say FDM or analog multiplexing system basically works on analog signals. WDM or wavelength division multiplexing signal works on optical signals but focuses on analog signals or, or whether optical signals in an analog way. And digital signal multiplexing signal basically it combines several low rate channels into one high rate one. And we look at it from it, we look at the data that is being transmitted from a digital point of view in the form of zeros and ones. And this uh, TDM, TDA, T time division multiplexing is more of our focus because we are, our line of studies is more to, uh, towards computer science and IT. So, we basically, our focus is more on TDM and this is comprised again of two types of TDM. We have synchronous TDM and the other one is asynchronous or statistical TDM. I will be talking about this in detail in the subsequent slides. Just to start with, if you see the first kind of multiplexing technique, we call it as frequency division multiplexing. So, let us start with the first one which we are saying is frequency division multiplexing. Uh, frequency division multiplexing basically it is an analog technique as I told you it is basically an analog technique that is applied when in case of frequency division multiplexing the unit of da uh, data transfer no more is in the form of bits per second or rather we can say the unit of data transfer is in the form of hertz right. So here we uh, basically talk of bandwidth in the, in the form of hertz because we are talking in the form of we are saying that the communication is analog communication and we are looking at it from the form of, from analog signals point of view. If you remember hertz, what are hertz? Hertz is basically the number of wave cycles, number of signals that is being transmitted per unit time. So, hertz is number, we can say number of, we can say it is number of wave cycles that is being transmitted per unit of time. And since we are talking uh, in terms of uh, analog communication, so our focus or rather our unit of multi uh, bandwidth will be hertz or rather is hertz. So, here what happens in FDM, here the signals that are generated by different sending devices, the signals that are being generated by different sending devices, they are being modulated by different frequencies, different carrier frequencies. I will take a graph and show, I will take a figure and show that in the next slide. And this modulated signals, then we combine the signals into a single composite signal. So, we have different signals coming from different inputs and those different signals are being modulated to different frequencies. And these different frequencies are combined into a single composite signal and the carrier frequency is basically uh, fine. Okay. And then what the next point is that as we are talking about and this, we are combining it into a single composite signal, 
and it is this single computed signal that is being transmitted over the network from the sender to the receiver. Now, another point that we need to remember is that when we are talking about carrier frequencies, let us say we are having five devices which wants to transmit data over the network. So, we will be having five different carrier frequencies. We will be having five different carrier frequencies, let us say F1, F2, F5. So, we will be having five different carrier frequencies and later on what we do, we combine these five different uh, frequencies and make it come up with a single composite signal which is being transmitted. But what point that is, what is the point that needs to be remembered when you are doing that? One important point that needs to be remembered is that the carrier frequencies should be separated by sufficient bandwidth so that we can accommodate the modulated signal. This is a point which we need to, which we need to remember when you go for this approach. And we can also focus on to ensuring that the channels are separated by strips of unused bandwidth guard uh, through guard bands which prevents the signals from overlapping the signals from different devices from overlapping to prevent that we can go for unused bandwidth guard so that there is no overlapping and we should, we should also ensure that the carrier frequencies which we are using they do not again interfere or overlap with the original data frequencies that are being transmitted from the devices now this is a figurative representation of what i just explained frequency division multiplexing as I told you, it is basically an analog multiplexing technique. Here we have input devices coming from multiple input lines and which is fed to a multiplexer out of this. Now, uh, and then we have the demultiplexer which takes the data from a single link and gives it to multiple devices. Here input device, multiple input data comes from multiple input devices and goes to a single link. In this link, we have three channels because we are having data from three different input lines. Right? And how exactly this works, I'll come, I'll explain this again uh, in the next slide. But what we need to remember is that for here, since we are saying that we are working on FDM or frequency division multiplexing, the next question is what happens if we are working on digital signals? The data that we are working on is represented by digital signals and the device that we're using is uh, using FDM. Then what to do? In that case, we can, we have to, uh, we have to, uh, convert a digital signal to an analog signal before we are using FDM for the purpose of multiplexing. So, there is no strict rules that if you are working on digital signals, we cannot use FDM, we can very well use it provided we convert the digital signals to analog signals. And this is the figurative representation of multiplexing and then I will also explain demultiplexing for analog signals. Here in this case, uh, we are having uh, three sources, fine, we have having three sources which will be entering, this is the medium, this is the link and we have three source, uh, device 1 or device 2 or source 1, source 2, source 3 and three sources will be sending the data to a medium and this is your MUX, this is your multiplexer. So, what you are doing, this three sources, they generate signals of similar, fre similar frequency, frequency ranges and what we do, inside this, this is your multiplexer, this is the multiplexer. Inside the multiplexer, this three signals, this three signals are modulated by three different carrier frequencies. That is a signal 1, S1 is modulated by frequency F1, signal S2 modulated by frequency F2, signal S3 modulated by frequency F3 and after that the resultant modulated signal, these are the resultant modulated signal, the resultant modulated signal are then, this is the modulated, the resultant modulated signal which are being generated by the multiplexer, they are then combined, if you see they are then combined into a single composite signal which is then sent over the network. So, this is what which is being sent over the network, right. So, this is how, which is happening at the multiplexers end and what happens at the demultiplexers end? At the demultiplexers end, at the demultiplexers end, just the reverse will be happening. So, it is something like this, this is the link this is the link here is the just to uh, help you draw the parallel here is the marks which is coming from the source you have multiple data coming from multiple data coming to multiplexer from different devices and it is being transmitted over the data over, over the medium the marks sends a composite signal so at the receiver's end the composite signal is received by the demultiplexer what the demultiplexer does is that it uses a series of filters like since here in this example we are having 
are three different uh, sources generating three different analog uh, signals. So we are having three filters because we have got three different sources and these filters are used to decompose the multiplexed signal into its constituent component signal. So you have the first filter decomposing into the, just see this is the, so we have the first filter, the first filter which decomposes the composite signal into its com uh, corresponding modulated signal, this one and the second filter and we have the second filter again decomposing it into its corresponding signal. The corresponding signal is this one similarly for the third filter and this individual signals are then passed basically to a D, to a D, D modulator which separates them from the carrier frequencies and then passed and then the resulting frequencies or the baseband analog signals are being transmitted to the receiver out of uh, um, out, uh, out of the data that has been composite data that has been transmitted over the medium. <coughs> If you take an example, just let us take an example, like let us say we have five channels each with 100 kilohertz bandwidth and uh, we need to multiplex them. In this case, what is the minimum bandwidth of the link that if there is a need for a guard band of 10 kilohertz between the channels to prevent the interference. Now, if you look at it, we are saying that we have five channels. So, five channels. So, since we have five channels, so you need uh, 100 kilohertz to be repeated five times and between the uh, guard band is the band of frequency between two channels to avoid interference. So between two channels we are going for uh, 10 kilohertz guard band, 10 kilohertz uh, guard band and so on. And so totally ultimately what is the uh, required bandwidth that the network should have. So since we have five number of uh, channels each of 100 kilohertz. So, total number of bandwidth will be 500 of course and we have guard bands that uh, phone number of guard bands that needs to be placed because we are having 5 channels. So, this 5 4 is equal to 5 minus 1 basically. So, 4 and each guard band of size 10. So, the total bandwidth that is required to ensure that the data combination happens is 540 kilohertz. Now, this is an, uh, that was a that was just a problem based on FTM. Now, let us come to the second uh, multiplexing method, which we are also calling it as wave division multiplexing method. Now, in case of wave division multiplexing method, that also wave division multiplexing method also uses analog multiplexing technique. But there is a difference. The difference is that wave division multiplexing method basically is used for optical uh, fiber communication or it is designed for cables which use optical fibers uh, where the data rate capability is comparatively much more higher. Uh, <coughs> so conceptually we can say the wavelength, uh, uh, the wavelength division multiplexing is quite similar to FDM but the difference is that here unlike the sig uh, signals associated with FDM or frequency division multiplexing, here we are involved with optical signals that are transmitted through fiber optic channels. So conceptually it is very quite similar to the first one that we have studied the frequency division multiplexing but uh, the realization, the technical method of realizing it is different because we were working on light signals here unlike the electromagnetic signals in the uh, FDM. <coughs> so, Normally here, now the next question is how do you go for multiplexing and demultiplexing in case of wavelength multi, uh, division multiplexing. For multiplexing and demultiplexing, we are using a device which we call it as prism. We all know what prism is. Prism is a device is, is, that is used for uh, in, in the case of light where prism is a device through which we can ensure that the light rays can be bent by on the basis of the angle of incidence and the frequency and so the combining and the splitting of the light sources for the purpose of multiplexing and demultiplexing in case of wavelength division multiplexing is achieved by the means of prism. Now prism in wavelength uh, division multiplexing and demultiplexing. So as I told you uh, here basically in this case, the prism is the device. This is the prism that is used at the multiplexes end, and this is the prism that is used at the demultiplexes end. The prism that is used at the multiplexes end, what does it do? It combines several, several input beams of light. You have got several beams of light that is coming. It combines several beams of light 
uh, each of them containing a narrow band of frequency into one output beam of a wider band of frequency. Conceptually, it is very similar to the one which we already have learned just now, that is frequency division multiplexing, but our focus here is on light signals. And the demultiplexer, what it does, it just reverse instead of combi combining, it splits up, it, it basically will be splitting up the higher band of frequency into its component, which is made up of comparatively narrower band of frequency. One application where uh, wave division multiplexing is used is SONET, which stands for synchronous optical network, where the multiple optical, optical fiber lines are multiplexed and demultiplexed. Uh, w wave division multiplexing basically, as I told you, it is an analog multiplexing technique to combine optical signals. So, I am not going to the more uh, the, um, the explanation of it, uh, how exactly what happens with the uh, multiplexers and the demultiplexers and because it is conceptually very similar to the previous one which we are calling it as frequency division multiplexing. So, let us come to the third one. The third one is called as time division multiplexing or it is also called as TDM. Now, time division multiplexing basically uh, it works on it works on uh, digital signals. Sorry, it works on digital signals, and here basically we can define time division multiplexing as a digital process which allows several connections to share the high bandwidth of a link. It is a digital process. So, in case of TDM, we don't share a portion. We don't share a portion of the bandwidth as in FDM. But what we do is that each connection, each of the connection, if you look at it, each of the connection, they occupy a portion of the time in the link. And the same link is, is used as in FDM. However, what uh, the link that is used is same as that we have discussed in FDM. However, the link is shown section by time rather than by frequency. Here, these are time slots. These are basically time slots, unlike frequency slots, which we talked in the previous uh, slides. So, here we are talking about a multiplexer where we have data coming from four digital devices which are generating digital signals and so we have the first time slot meant for the first device, the second time slot for the second device, third time slot, fourth time slot. Now one entire thing, this entire thing in totality we call it as frame which is made up of all time slots coming from all the possible inputs. So if you look at it once one frame is transmitted then you go to the second frame, third frame and so on. So, <clears throat> so we uh, we can say here uh, basically in principle it is a digital multiplexing technique and the digital data from different sources they are basically combined and in combination the point to be remembered is that we are time sharing the link as I just explained right now. However, one more important point again to be dis discussed here is that what if the, the input to the device are not digital signals, let us say they are analog signals and how to handle that scenario. In that case, we can ensure that analog data can also be sampled and changed to digital data and then only we can go for multiplexing the same by using TDM. <coughs> now TDM basically are of two different schemes, one is synchronous and the other one is statistical TDM. In synchronous, each input connection has an allotment in the output even if it is not sending data. That means all the input, like I said, there are four input connections. So, they will be, ha be having four slots in the medium even if one of the data is not coming from one of the slot. But in case of statistical time division, the slots are dynamically allocated to improve the bandwidth frequency. Let me explain this more in detail. So, uh, in case of synchronous, as I told you, each input connection has an allotment and that uh, the, here the data flow of, of each input connection is divided into units and each input occupies one in, input time slot and the unit which you are talking which is divided into unit this unit can be a bit or it can be a character or it can be a block of data and each input unit basically becomes one output unit and occupies one output time slot. However, one point that we need to remember is that the duration of an output time slot is n times shorter than the duration of an input time slot. This is a very important point that we need to remember when you are talking about TDM. So, we can, uh, in other words, we can say a unit in the output connection has a shorter duration as uh, it travels faster. If you look at it, this is an example of a synchronous time division multiplexing, an example of a synchronous time division multiplexing. So, we have this uh, three input signals coming from three different devices and the signals out here are digital signals. 
So, in, in this case what you are having, so in TDM a round of data unit from each unit connection is collected into a frame. Let us say we have A1, A2, A3, these are the data units that, been, that is being transmitted, uh, that is being uh, sampled at, at the input end of the multiplexer. And let us say the data units are for each line, it is taken, let us say each unit is taking T seconds, right. Now, when it comes to the frame, each unit will be have of T seconds and this uh, here, the first unit which will be meant the first time slot, let us say this is the first time slot meant for device coming from A, the other one is B and the other one is C. Since the whole thing is T, the time frame reserved for the first time slot for the slot coming from A will be T by 3. Why 3? Because there are 3 input devices. Had it been N, then it will be T by N, right? And uh, similarly, so if you look at it, and uh, since there are 3 devices, 3 inputs uh, data coming from 3 devices, so once we are taking care of all, of all 3 slots concerning to 3 devices, this whole thing in totality is called as a, as a frame. And this is, let us say, if you look at it, if you are looking at it, this is the first frame, the first frame here A1, B1, C1, the second frame, the third frame and so on. So, if we have n connections, for example, a frame will be divided into n time slots and each time slot will be allocated for each unit. As I told you, if the duration of the input unit is t, then the duration of a slot, the duration of a slot will be t by n. What is n? If we have n number of connections. Here, basically, we have three number of connections. And this time slots, this time slots, uh, this time slots are uh, grouped into frames. A frame consists of one complete cycle of time slot from each devices that are connected. So, if you have got n input lines, then each frame will have n number of slots. And in case of synchronous TDM, TDM, the data rate of the link is n times faster, uh, faster, and the unit duration is n times slower. Now, okay. Now, what uh, the next is uh, statistical time division multiplexing. And uh, so, in case of statistical time division multiplexing, what is the difference? In synchronous TDM, we have seen that each input is having a slot, each input is having a slot, but in statistical time division multiplexing, the slots are not reserved beforehand, but they are dynamically allocated to improve the bandwidth efficiency. Uh, only when an input line has a slot worthy of a data to be sent, then only a frame it will be reserved in the frame. So here, in case of statistical multiplexing, the number of slots is not equal to the number of uh, number of slots in a frame, it is not equal to the number of input lines that is connected to the multiplexer, rather it will be equal to the number of input lines which are currently ready to transmit data. So, it will always be less than the number of input lines. And the, what does the multiplexer do here? The multiplexer basically checks each input line in the in a round robin fashion and sees we out of the, let us say there are n input lines, out of the n input lines, how many uh, devices are uh, ready to transmit. Let us say it will be n, n minus n1 for example. So, it will allocate n1 instead of n unlike the case of synchronous stadium. So, uh, here because uh, if let us say the total is n but it is using only n1. So, in that case how to remember which of the n1 devices out of n. So, in that case one important requirement is to keep track of the address. Here when you are, whenever the data is being transmitted in case of statistical TDM, it carries the data, not only the data but also the address associated with that data. That is a point that is required. Let me take a figure which will be more clear. Now, if you look at this figure, this is the case of time division multiplexing using, uh, using synchronous. This is using synchronous and this is using statistical. See, if you look at this synchronous, here we have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, devices. So, each frame is having 5 slots. Now, if you look at the first slot, A1, B1 and D1 is available, but from C and D, for C and E, it is not there. So, this is going waste. Similarly, if you look at the second uh, second frame, B2, E2, D2 and E2 are there, but frames from A and C, uh, uh, slots for A and C are missing. So, this is something which is going waste. This is taken care of in statistical TDM. So, if you just see the same thing in how it is handled in statistical TDM, we are not allocating slots for all the inputs. We are allocating slots only for those inputs which has data to be sent. So, in case of A1, this is A1, this is for B1 and this is for D1. So, unlike here, we are not losing the slots, 
but we need to remember which this data relates to which input device. So, in that case, we also have to keep a track of the addresses. So, A1 coming from let us say device A, device A, B1 coming from device B, D1 coming from device D. So, which in case of statistical data, we can keep a track not only of the data that is been coming, that is being transmitted, but also we also along with the data, we also keep a track of the address of the device from which it is coming because we do not have the slots f a frame equal to the number of devices rather the number the slots of a frame is equal to the number of devices which are currently transmitting data. So, this is the difference between synchronous CDM and asynchronous CDM. <coughs> uh, this is the references for uh, here which are referring. The references uh, the books which I have referred is Ferozen, Data Communications and Networking. Uh, a very good book and uh, computer networks by Tannenbaum. I have also referred to Rose and Ross by computer networks for uh, a, a top down approach. That much for now. Thank you so much.